Thank you for joining the live session. We will begin with the live in less than a minute. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Get Technical series. I'm Kavita Agrawal, the founder of EXP Invest, and we are here today to talk about stock analysis for swing trading purposes. Now, when we do swing trading analysis, we have to take care of a lot of things. The first thing that I want to talk to you about today is how to go about familiarizing yourself with a stock's specific price action. Now, there is a lot of buzz these days about price action analysis, but when you go into uh, making decisions on the basis of price action analysis, you have to take a unique approach for every stock. You know why? Because every stock has a different personality. This is also why for the purpose of swing trading, it is always better to work with a very limited watch list of stocks. I, for instance, prefer to work with only 200 stocks watch list and within this 200 stocks watch list at any point of time i know which are the stocks which are inactive for trading which means these stocks are either trending downwards or these stocks are trending um uh sideways or creating a plateau which means it's at the end of a bull trend okay now in order to explain my watch list uh phenomena let me actually share my screen and show it to you So we'll come to the trading view shortly, but let's first talk about my watch list phenomena. So this is my um, this is what I shared on my Telegram channel just this morning. If you're interested in getting this access, uh, let me copy the link. Uh, I will uh, share the link of this um, particular post in the comments so you can find this um, immediately. And let me also make this a little bit bigger so that you can see better. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just wait for things to load. Now, going back to the post. Now, my watch list, like I said, has around 200 stocks. And I divide my watch list uh, into four categories. The first and the most important category actually is the red category. The red category are the inactive stocks, stocks where I don't want to actively swing trade in unless there is a very compelling opportunity. What happens is when a stock enters a bear trend, there's a pretty good chance that it will give you fake uh, signals. So we have to wait for confirmations. And if a larger time frame like the daily or the weekly is showing downward trend, then it's better to identify and mark those stocks like that so that even if they do get picked up by a screener, you know better. Then there is an orange list. The orange list of the stocks which are picked up by my screener and show potential. All right. So orange lists. So what, what I do is every time I run my screener on charting, I download the results and using the results, I create a new watch list. Now in the watch list, the flag colors that I use for my trade on my trading view are visible, right? Now within this watch list, I'll be able to see which are the stocks that are inactive or which are the stocks that I'm already holding, right? So now if I go through the watch list one by one, the screener hit list basically one by one, now I can continue to add pink color or orange color. You know, if a stock is showing potential, I'll mark it as orange. So then what is the pink color? The pink color are the stocks that I'm actively monitoring to take position. Now, suppose there is a RSI positive divergence has occurred and the stock is drawing closer and closer to taking an active position, then I will move it to the pink list. Finally, the green list is when a stock has already been bought into my portfolio is when it gets added to the green list. So for a stock to actually 
deserve my capital it has to go through a series of analysis now i'm going to take you through the analysis now remember that all of these processes are taught in details in my advanced technical analysis training boot camp the information about the advanced technical analysis boot camp has also been shared on my telegram channel you then you're more than welcome to join my telegram channel and go through it the link for joining the telegram channel has already been dropped in the comment section all you have to do is click or if you have the telegram app simply go into the search button and uh, write trade with kavita when you do join the uh, channel which exactly says trade with kavita because as you can see there are lots of fake channels running so join the channel with around 50 to 35 members in it right now um quickly let's just show you my watch list like i said my watch list has 200 stocks so these are 200 stocks and there are the stocks that i'm monitoring for entry stocks that i'm holding stocks that uh, are on um, you know my hit list or you know they have some potential in stocks that are inactive right uh, right now i'm going through the process of updating that's why you're seeing a lot of the stocks are not marked with any of the flag colors but ideally every single stock in this category in this entire watch list should be assigned a flag color basically i want to know um what place the stock holds at any point of time right so this is my workflow now let's turn our attention towards analysis of the stock but before we turn to the analysis of stock i also want to tell you about my um um about one more feature i know a lot of you will have questions during the session um for stocks which you might be holding in your own portfolio so for that you can visit the stock request page and fill in this form you simply need to mention your name your number the ticker name of the stock which you want me to analyze the cost price and any additional comment which can help me know your profile better which will help me give specific advice to you now after this session i'll take 10 15 minutes to answer your queries so be quick because if other people fill fill the form before you then i will um, answer their queries first right fastest finger first all right so with that let's uh, move back to analysis of a stock for swing trading so last time i had done a session where i discussed cesc in great details um but today i kind of want to discuss a different stock so i'm thinking maybe i'll pick up a stock from uh, the monitoring list and take you through it i really like sun tv so uh, let's do some analysis on sun tv or actually let's do crystal because crystal is actually one of the stocks where i've done swing trading multiple times and this is my most profitable swing trading stock um uh, why is that i'm going to tell you now so um let's actually delete all the drawings and start from scratch i'm going to make this full screen um the first thing that i like to do when i'm analyzing a stock is start with drawing the trend lines so i will use the cloning trend line methodology and first i will identify either major peaks or major bottoms whatever jumps out at me and draw my maiden trend line i'm going to make this a little bit thicker so that all of you can see it better right now since the maiden trend line is drawn i will clone this trend line to capture other major internal and external points on the chart on the weekly time frame itself what this does at this point is just mapping the path of a stock i am not interested in making a decision right now i just want to familiarize myself with how the price is has been moving since it ipoed in the stock market right what this basically shows me is that the overall trend of the stock is really bullish and the stock topped out with kind of a double top formation somewhere around here um after like a more than a year i think more than maybe two years of consolidation so september 14 to almost two and half years of consolidation it topped out after it topped out it corrected all the way 50% to first of all the 500 ema so if i just zoom in you can see this gray line this is the 500 ema of the weekly time frame and since then it has been rallying again and it looks like the beginning of a new uptrend and a general sense of the way the stock also moves is that it is a kind of like on a larger time scale it's a super trender which means once it enters into a trend it continues in that trend for a long term now having understood that broad profile about the stock i'm interested in 
I will now move one time frame lower to the daily time frame. Right? Um, on the weekly time frame, there's one more thing that I want to do. Every time, because I am a momentum based trader, I, I want to always participate in stocks when the momentum is close to beginning and want to get out when the momentum is close to exhaustion. So I use the indicator RSI with a setting of 25 period on 15, 75 minute time frame. On the weekly time frame, I use the setting of 14 period. What I like to do is when I'm, especially when I'm starting the analysis of a chart, I will draw vertical lines on the chart wherever the RSI has touched the level of 30 first on the weekly time frame. All right. So I will hover on the price chart and press Alt V to draw a white colored, you know, the color that matches the RSI's color. I will draw a line that matches that uh, RSI color, a vertical line, which I can also see on other charts, for example, the daily time frame. The purpose of this is very simple. I want to be able to see how the price reacted on the lower time frame, that is 15 and 75 minute time frame, around these price levels when it actually turned super bullish, right? This exercise will be done on the weekly time frame first, and then we'll move to the daily time frame to perform the same. So every time the RSI kind of interacted with the level of 30 is what we are trying to capture here all the way to the IPO, right? So we see the IPO happened here and this is pretty much it. Now let's move back to the daily time frame. Now on the daily time frame, what I can see is there are some other important lines which have not been captured by the trend line, but these do seem like very important uh, price points and they also fall, they also react to the same trend line that we are using. Now when drawing trend lines for the purpose of swing trading, at least using my methodologies, I prefer to use the trend lines with the same slope on a logarithmic chart. I don't prefer to use multiple trend lines because even using lots of different trend lines using drawn using different slopes can lead to development of biases. We want to avoid that. So what this is showing is that this upper trend line, right? Let me change this color to maybe orange. This upper trend line has been acting as resistance as the price is coming up from the lowest trend line. And this is the trend line which has been acting as support, right? So this is kind of becoming a channel. So the short term target for Crystal clearly on the basis of this chart itself is 26% up almost 6200, right? But right now we are not interested in that analysis. Like we are not interested in drawing conclusions just yet because our analysis is still incomplete. However, since we are on the daily time frame, we'll take another observation and that is on the RSI of the daily time frame, there is a small negative divergence. Now, before we get into further analysis, let's do a little bit more uh, vertical line drawing. So on the daily time frame, I want to draw this vertical line right here. But for the purpose of differentiating these vertical lines, the lines which I'm drawing on the daily time frame will uh, match the color of the RSI of the daily time frame, which for me is bright yellow, right? Now I'm going to keep drawing more and more lines every time the RSI touched or almost touched the level of 30 on the RSI with a setting of 20 period, right? Uh, why do I use a 20 period RSI? What is the logic? What is the math behind it? Why is it better than a 14 period RSI? All of these things will be discussed in great details during my bootcamp. So here we've got um lines and we can see we've come to the next section of line where we interact with the level of 30 on the weekly as well and here again one more all right a couple here so the reason why we uh, or rather i prefer to do this is because drawing these lines it adds a lot of insight you know when you're looking at charts uh, there is a lot of information coming at you continuously. You want to train your eye muscles. You want to train your brain in only picking up messages or indications that matter and then draw insights on the basis of those. Since I know my objective of swing trading of using momentum or I want to trade in the direction of the trend, it is very important that I first study the direction of the trend. All right. Now, in this chart, from a very uh, spaced out 
stance let's take a check of what the price has done every time the rsi kind of interacted with the level of 30 okay so here what we can see first that the rsi uh, so here the price was in a downtrend so what you can see in the downtrend when the interaction happened with the level of 30 on the daily time frame um it did not yield to any upside until what happened until the weekly time frame first turned bullish how do we know the weekly time frame turned bullish here the weekly time frame touched the level of 30 and started to turn up and subsequently what happened we saw rsi positive divergence and we saw an upside let's quickly capture the extent of this upside 309 percentage in around one year right and then there was some correction another bull trend some correction here we get a uh, again we uh, so this correction we did not see the price coming all the way down to the level of 30 which is fine what happened here is that the price came all the way down to the level of 30 gave another positive divergence right here so this is a positive divergence why because lower low on price versus a higher low on rsi and then the price started to move up again this rally from bottom to top just to get a sense again lasted around 5x in a matter of two years right then again the price showed negative divergence soon enough corrected all the way uh, to the level of 30 while the weekly time frame continues to be quite bullish which means here again the price rallied all the way to the top to give a almost a 3x return uh, in a period of a little bit more than a year again we see interaction with the level of 30 some sideways consolidation with a bottom formation and then a sharp rally began which lasted for many many years and the return profile of that until the next correction was 4x in about how many years is this i think four years around 5x and maybe four years then again we see some interaction here a double bottom formation and a strong positive divergence if you can notice let me extend the chart a little bit here because the prices are quite constricted right so here we see that the price retested approximately the same low and created a nice little positive divergence and then from this positive divergence it went on to give a 177 percent rally right the reason why we are doing this is we kind of want to see how the price reacts when the rsi starts turning up from the level of 30 on various time frames the the uh, result that you will get from this analysis is that you will see that when the lower time frame or when the higher time frame is bullish if you take trades on the basis of one time frame lower right uh it will give you good results when it comes to swing trading so now since we are swing trading with a holding period of somewhere between two weeks to three months we want to use 75 minute time frame as a decision making time frame so the vertical line drawing exercise that we've done on those uh, weekly time frame and the daily time frame needs to be repeated also on the 75 minute time frame right so quickly let's do that and this is a one time exercise you don't have to do this every time you come back to the chart you have to do it just one time to make sure that the lines remain and uh, as you continue analyzing the chart as you continue working with it you just keep drawing your vertical lines into the future right this does make the chart look a little bit cluttered but if you know what your drawings mean then they are not clutter they are notes um and as you all know i prefer to use the uh, same layout that i use for my analysis and trading for these live sessions also sure they do look cluttered but you know i want to share as much knowledge as i can and i can only do that if i am sharing with you my genuine um my genuine terminal right so here another vertical trend line and then that's there um i think this can use another line and one there when you're drawing the vertical trend lines there is one very important thing that you need to take care of that your crosshair it should be hovering um in the within the boundary of the price chart if your crosshair is hovering within the pane 
of your RSI, then your vertical lines will not show up across different time frames. So make sure you're drawing, you're using the drawing tool on the price chart because only drawings on the price chart show up on different time frames, not the drawings made on the indicator panels, right? So here again, I'm going to draw another one. It doesn't have to be exactly 30. If it's like 31, 32, you can capture those as well with this method. So wherever the RSI is kind of uh, spent a lot of time under the level of 30, I want to draw lots of lines because when I go back to the daily or the weekly time frame, I want to know that on 75 minute time frame, this happened, right? So like here, 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 here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Doing the 75 minute time frame naturally takes a lot of time. And I would not recommend you to do this exercise on lower time frames than 75 minutes because then your chart can get really, really cluttered and you might actually not be able to see the price action. Uh, but yeah, the 75 minute time frame works really well for me in the when it comes to swing trading. Um, and I will show you in some time why that is. Okay. So I think you know, when you're doing it on your time, you can cover the entire price activity and start analyzing all the way from the IPO. Now, since more than half of the chart is left, I'll not go all the way to the IPO. But since we've reached this point where a bull trend started on the weekly time frame, let's get down to analysis, right? On the sorry, on the daily time frame. So on the daily time frame, we saw a positive divergence which ended over here. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go just a little bit behind and let's just draw a few more vertical lines maybe here. OK. Now, um, a very important. Oh, my God. Why did I do that? I Sorry, I re reset the chart. And also, if you're wondering how am I able to draw the vertical line so quickly, I'm using a keyboard shortcut of Alt plus V to draw the vertical lines really quickly. Right. All right. So this is where the RSI hit the level of 30 on the daily time frame. And as you can see, uh, this when this happened, right, same time we saw a positive divergence on the 75 minute time frame as well. Quickly clone this and just set one line here, one line here and one line here. All right. So uh, before this positive divergence, what we can also see is that when this little bit of correction unfolded, right? The RSI of the 75 minute time frame, first of all, created a sharp negative divergence at the very beginning of the trend and it moved into the negative range shift. So when a stock is in a negative range shift, it's better not to try and catch falling knives. It's better to wait for signals of reversal. The signal, the earliest signal of reversal that you can get usually is the RSI positive divergence. But you need to wait for certain confirmations like maybe a bit of a higher high or volume pickup or support from a major uh, EMA, though that is not a very strong indicator. Or you can also go down one time frame lower and seek confirmation from that time frame. Right. Once you get that confirmation, if you look at this chart, the immediate rally that unfolded, the length of that rally, suppose you wait for this higher high and then when the stock pulled back, you entered. The extent of the rally over here is 24%. Now, obviously, you won't be able to capture all 24% of it, but you can easily capture up to 12% upside within just three months. After that, you need to wait for the price to again come back down. Now, since on the daily time frame, um, we hadn't seen a strong indication, we would have ideally waited for the retest of the same low or a lower low. When that retest happened, we noticed there was a positive divergence on the daily time frame. And along with that, if you notice here, there was a RSI positive range shift on the 75 minute time frame. Right. So this point onwards, you will see the RSI of the 75 minutes started hovering above the level of 60 for a longer period of time versus what it was doing previously. So here there was a negative divergence. Right. So this negative divergence was also the indication that this upside does not have a lot of steam and it may not be able to sustain itself. Now, suppose you entered on the pullback here. 
if you even hold it for three peaks, you would have been able to make around 30% in just about two months, right? So this is what I'm talking about. Every time the RSI goes back to the level of 30, when the daily and the weekly time frame are bullish, you can start monitoring a stock for the uh, for potential long uh, side entries, right? This kind of swing trading can be repeated on any stock as many times as the price action unfolds. Now, coming to Crystal's most recent price activity, what we notice is that this is on 24th January is the date when the daily time frame triggered the level of 30 on the daily. Uh, when the daily time frames RSI triggered the level of 30. And on the 75 minute time frame, if you notice, uh, this is also where the 200 EMA of the daily time frame got tested amidst a strong upward rally. Right. So this was a very good entry point. Um, however, now that the stock has started giving RSI negative divergence after creating sort of a triple top or a double top kind of a level. So 50 to 40 has become a very important resistance. So now is a very good time to basically book profits in the stock, which would be a very good, you know, even if you're booking tomorrow, it's a nice little 36 percent upside right suppose you did not even enter here you waited for some um, confirmation in the form of a higher high so you would have entered somewhere around here still a 20 percent upside in 57 days is very very decent returns your next objective should be to wait for the rsi to come back down to the level of 30 on the 75 minute time frame before you try to re-enter or if you feel it's very bullish you can also set an alert on the 15 minute time frame to enter so uh, right now, the stock wouldn't be part of my pink list or my monitoring list. But once it triggers a level of 30 on the 75 minute time frame or the 15 minute time frame and starts looking bullish again, that is when I would enter it into my monitoring list once more. Right. Uh, so with respect to this explanation that I've given the analysis of stock for momentum um, or swing trading, momentum trading or swing trading on the basis of by drawing vertical lines using the RSI level 30 across various time frames. If you have any questions about this, good time to ask in the comment section. And I'm going to quickly look at uh, the comments and start answering your question. Now, remember, if you have um, questions uh, about stock query, if you have stock queries that you'd like to check in with me, I will again remind you to go into my stock request sheet and fill out the form so I can answer your questions quickly. All right, let's look at the comments. We've got one um, in one of your video, you mentioned 2 lakhs is minimum for trading, excluding the margin. I want to know trading is the only source of income. So Suman, no, trading. Uh, so when I mentioned 2 lakh as a minimum trading, I'm not talking about someone doing trading as a full-time profession. If you want to start trading as a full-time profession, you need at least one crore you know you need a fund an emergency fund there's a lot of things going behind that but if you're somebody very new to the market and you're just learning about price action technical analysis and want to try your hands at swing trading then i suggest start with a capital of at least two lakhs so that you know you have some space some room to play right uh with capital less than two lakhs it's better to focus on index trading and accumulate capital by you know doing your job and so on and so forth now um shivraj kindly fill up the form the form has already been shared with you visit expinvest.in slash stock request uh let's take a look at more comments i can see there are a lot of stock queries so we'll quickly move on to the request i don't see any analysis related questions so fabulous Let's get started with the analysis of stocks. So we'll go into the responses. Let's view the sheet uh, and let's take up these questions today. All right. Uh, it is already 5 p.m. Um, awesome. Now, one reminder that if you're interested in uh, going over my previous videos where i have shared a lot of knowledge about a swing trading hack for bearish markets uh, how to do tax loss harvesting or if you want to just look at the various playlists for uh let's get technical and uh 
retail trader special on market outlook you're more than welcome to go over to my youtube channel just search kavita agrawal cmt cfa and you will be able to find me um on the top right all right with that let's go back to analyzing we have sonanda asking for the analysis of hscl all right H S C L. All right. Uh, Himadri specialty. Uh, you can see that it has taken a bit of a correction, and it's a perpetual bull trend stock. So it is looking quite attractive for a potential fresh entry because the risk reward ratio is very good, and the underlying trend also continues to be quite strong. However, what I can see is that uh, the RSI on the seventy. On the weekly time frame is not very very stable, and the stock has a bit of a tendency to kind of check back, check into the level of forty on the weekly time frame, even during intermittent corrections. So maybe you want to wait for that because I can see a five wave impulse wave already over. So this might be a bit of a major correction, and just like here, the stock took like a nice twenty three percent correction uh, because it was a major trend correction, right? Versus the intermittent corrections are much much smaller. So this correction you can expect it to, um, you know, maybe go down to the level of two for two fifty five. So what I would suggest is set up a buy GTT order with a level somewhere at the level of two eighty three. Also considering the market is weak right now, so you can expect some more downside in a very volatile stock like HSCL. um so yeah i would suggest you to set up a gtt order somewhere near the level of 280 285 also maybe 253 270 and whatever gets captured there gets captured there right also at the same time i would strongly recommend you to use the level of uh, around 220 as a stop loss because no matter how good a stock it's not worth losing your capital over it that being said hscl is a better stock for kind of a longish term holding so if you get into the stock be prepared to hold it for at least 6 7 months if not a whole year i would recommend you to hold it for multiple years but you know if you're not looking for multi year holding then at least hold it for 6 7 months the first target that i'll recommend on the stock uh, would be around 460 level because of the trend line which it has tested in the previous rallies and if 460s 465 gets sustained then the stock can also test the level of 770 rupees but it would be a bit of a stretch to predict that just yet without uh, getting a confirmation of positive reversal on the price front all right uh, let's move on to another analysis uh, nilesh is asking for a new stocks analysis uh what is this stock mm. i'm not sure what stock is this nilesh it looks like you've entered the wrong name of the stock because i am not getting any result um so we'll move on to the next one by mr rajiv koshik gandhar all right so let's input the name of the stock here Three hundred and ten rupees is where you have. Okay, this is clearly a downtrending stock. I would not recommend you to hold this stock. Sell it, book your loss, and harvest that loss to free up your capital and make better choices next time. All right, moving on to another stock by Mr. Pradeep. Uh, he's asking for analysis, short-term analysis, uh, for the IOC stock. So Indian Oil Corporation. the underlying trend is very very strong however we've seen a bit of a correction begins in the month of february the good news is that this correction has been happening against pretty dry volumes whereas the uptrend that was unfolding was happening against strong and growing volumes which means that the underlying bull trend is still pretty strong that being said look at the weekly time, uh, the 75 minute time frame the 75 minute time frame shows that the price has corrected almost 21% the rsi has kind of also interacted with the level of 30 and started to turn up 
15 minute time frame shows a even better story because here we can see the formation of a positive divergence right here and a positive beautiful positive range shift if you notice the last time the stock was kind of the rsi of the 15 minute time frame was so bullish was when the price was still unfolding into a big bull trend right so if if i can just stretch this it was bullish all throughout unless before that when the correction was happening so now during the correction itself we can see the rsi kind of going back to that bull trend bull range and we also see this rsi positive divergence so this is an indication for us that the price might be ready to you know um form a bottom and start rallying again so what i would do is i would set up a lot at the level of 30 and i would uh, wait for that to trigger to get triggered for a better entry point right uh, there is this yellow line which is a 50 ema so i would want to potentially enter the stock somewhere around 160 to 160 uh, so 160 rupees to 162 rupees would be a good entry point for this stock and what would be my stop loss that's a no-brainer this is the low that would forge my stop loss so even for anybody who's holding a short-term position 153 would be a good stop loss level and a conservative first target here could be 196 rupees moving on to the next stock uh tata steel we are looking at tata steel for roshan should I still hold Tata Steel bought at 150? Will there be short term gain to 158 or 160? Let's look it up for Roshan. So here I can see some bit of a negative divergence and also decline in volume, but the volume was very strong initially. Uh, there can be a little bit of a dip. I would expect the level of 148 to get retested in the immediate future but the underlying trend is very very strong so if you can hold it for maybe two three months i would definitely recommend to hold it for two three months i think tata steel here is uh heading upwards and i would expect it to test at least this trend line so the first target for the very very short term here would be around the level of 173 for you so that is an upside of around 11 to 13 percent from the current market price and you can also add more to your position around the level of 148 however you should also maintain a stop loss right at the level of 143 for tata steel so avinash is asking for the analysis of uh exit criteria for tcs see all tata stocks are really good to hold in the next five six years right uh, TCS is something that uh, I am currently monitoring for uh, potential active positions. And as you can see in my note, um, the 15 minute RSI is in a bear range, which means that as the price continues to decline here, the level of 30 continues to get breached multiple times. And also on the upside, sorry, uh, not all the way since there, since here, right? The level of 30 has been getting breached consistently and uh, time and again, the price also kind of becomes shy and comes back down level though, below the level of 60. Uh, what does that tell us? That tells us that the underlying momentum is not very, very strong. Also, the price decline has been happening against strong volumes on the short term. So I think in the next two, three weeks, maybe uh, the IP sector is expected to kind of stabilize and start giving good opportunities. But right now, if you want to accumulate, it's better to accumulate in very small tranches just to get like a nice average price. Because as we know, turnaround in the IP sector happens a little bit suddenly. So you can do uh, accumulation. And I think IT, uh, sorry, TCS can come down to retest the level of 3700. So it, it's prudent to set up multiple entry points all along, right? Um, if you're holding currently, then use the stop loss at the level of 6225. And even if you plan fresh entries, use the stop loss for the level of around 3625 for TCS. 
uh what would be my upside i think the underlying trend is quite strong so i can expect the upward rally to continue and trend lines suggest that whenever the price kind of uh gets into a fresh rally it tends to you know keep going trend line to trend line so there are lots of upward uh i would say targets for the stock and the rally that is unfolding on a larger time frame is quite fresh so for a long term holding this is a very attractive stock even at the current price for the short term uh or for regular swing trading the first target would be around the level of uh, 4444 all right for mr anuj let's look at um i don't know what is the stock graph assets i don't think i have studied this stock but another major loser stock there is absolutely no reward for holding a stock in bear trend i would suggest you exit the stock immediately because it has already declined from the top price it's already declined 50% there is nothing stopping the stock for from declining declining another 50% salvage whatever capital you can book that loss and use it to set off your uh, future tax liability as you become a better trader moving forward ashok ji is seeking analysis on knr construction um at the level of 290 rupees so 290 so you have been holding it through a decline you basically bought the stock almost at the resistance level see that is where i almost book profit in my holding right uh so you missed kind of missed the stop loss level but what is the analysis suggesting for a short term sorry the chart is like a total mess uh here i can see that the daily time frame has breached the bull range so i would expect more correction i would expect the test of the level of 30 on the daily time frame so i'll set an alert there uh on the chart i can also see the 200 ema of the weekly time frame hovering near the level of 230 which also becomes a potentially potentially a good support so i am not very bullish on knr construction and i would recommend you to exit the stock immediately and salvage whatever capital you can sunk cost fallacy here whatever has been lost in terms of price correction let it go save what you can all right so I have a hard stop. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the session today. So I'll take your leave. I hope I was able to add some value to you today, and uh, I will see you again on Friday with the market outlook series, where I will bring to you the analysis of uh, Nifty, uh, Bank Nifty, and the intersector analysis. So see you at five p.m. on Friday on my YouTube channel and ET Market Stream. Until then, Namaste.